uh, welcome to our uh, next topic that is uh, tracheostomy first we will see the definition of tracheostomy tracheostomy is a surgical procedure whereby a stoma is created in the anterior wall of trachea which is brought out to the cervical skin now let us see the history of uh, tracheostomy so the first uh, or the oldest reference to tracheostomy comes from the rigveda 2000 bc and the first mention of this operation in the writings of Aretas and Galen in the 1st and 2nd centuries and the first person known actually to perform it was Antonio Bassavola in 1546 and the term tracheostomy was coined by Heister in 1718 the first tracheostomy tube with an inner cannula was introduced by George Martin in 1730 to avoid the post-operative problem of tubal obstruction Tracheostomy was allegedly done by Alexander the Great in the 14th century BC. One interesting account is a lad of 14 years had swallowed a bag of gold to prevent the theft and the bag had locked in his esophagus and produced upper airway obstruction. So Habicot in 1620, he performed tracheotomy to improve the airway and then manipulated the bolus initiating its esophageal descent and the coins were recovered several days later in the rectum. His other patient was a boy who given up for dead after suffering knife wound in the neck and Habicot performed tracheotomy and removed the blood clots from the larynx and thus saved the boy's life. The operation described by Chevalier Jackson remains the principle of the operation to the present day and the modern percutaneous tracheostomy was performed by or developed by Toey and Weinstein in 1969. Okay, that's all about the history of tracheostomy. Now we'll see the functions of tracheostomy. Alternative pathway for uh, breathing. Okay, tracheostomy is an alternative pathway for breathing. How it is? It circumvents any obstruction in the upper airway from lips to the tracheotomy. Second function is it improves the alveolar ventilation. How it, it will improve? It by decreasing the dead space by 30 to 50 percentage and by reducing the resistance to airflow. Third function is protection of the airways. By using a cuffed tube, there are two types of tube, tracheostomy tube, cuffed and uncuffed. So by the use of cuffed tube, the tracheobronchial tree is protected against the aspiration of pharyngeal secretion like in case of bulbar paralysis of coma, blood as in hemorrhage from the pharynx, larynx or maxillofacial injuries. With the tracheostomy, the pharynx and larynx can also be packed to control bleeding. Fourth function is the permits the removal of the tracheobronchial secretions. When the patient is unable to cough as in coma, head injuries, respiratory analysis, paralysis or when the cough is painful as in chest injuries or upper abdominal operation, the tracheobronchial airway can be kept clean of secretions by repeated suction through tracheostomy, thus avoiding the need for a repeated bronchoscopy or intubation which is not only traumatic but also require expertise. Fifth function is intermittent positive pressure respiration. If this positive pressure respiration is required beyond 10, 72 hours, tracheostomy is superior to intubation. The last one is to administer anesthesia. In cases where the endotracheal intubation is difficult or impossible, as in laryngopharyngeal growth or trismus, we can administer administration to this uh, tracheostomy too. Now we will see the indications of tracheostomy. So basically there are three main indications that is the respiratory obstruction second one is the retained secretions third one is the respiratory insufficiency so this is the box showing the indications of tracheostomy first one is the respiratory obstruction in cases of infection like uh, acute laryngotracheobronchitis acute epiglottitis diphtheria ludwig's angina peritonsillar uh, retropharyngeal or parapharyngeal abscess or tongue abscess second one is trauma respiratory obstruction due to trauma like external injury of larynx and trachea, trauma due to endoscopy, especially in infants and child, fractures of the mandible or maxillofacial injuries. Third one is neoplasm causing the respiratory obstruction, like a benign and malignant neoplasm of the larynx, pharynx, upper trachea, tongue, and thyroid. Third one is foreign body in larynx that also can cause a respiratory obstruction. The nadema of the larynx due to a steam, irritant fumes or nas uh, gases, allergy like uh, angioneurotic uh, neurotic edema or drug sensitivity, radiation, etc. Next, next is the bilateral abductal paralysis. Here abductal paralysis, there the vocal cord will be in a 
will be closed, vocal cord will be closed and there will be respiratory obstruction. Next is the congenital anomalies like a laryngeal web, cyst, tracheoesophageal fistula, bilateral coil atresia, etc. Second indication is the retained secretions. That uh, can happen in three conditions. When the patient is unable to cough, like in coma of any cause like a head injury, cerebrovascular accident, narcotic overdose, or paralysis of the respiratory muscles like spinal injuries, polio, gullian barry syndrome, myasthenia gravis, spasm of respiratory muscles, tetanus, eclampsia, strychnine poisoning. Second one is painful cough, that like in cases of chest injuries, multiple rib fractures, pneumonia. Third one is the aspiration of pharyngeal secretions like in again malbar polio, polyneuritis, bilateral phylaryngeal paralysis. And last one is the respiratory insufficiency that can be due to a chronic lung conditions like emphysema, chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, atletasis, 